Fino here with Fino's Garden Update, and this is just a reminder, this video is for 21 and older only, and this contains a documentary of medical marijuana growing, so if this is offensive to you in any way, please do not watch this video, and if you enjoy the video, please like the video, and otherwise keep it green and keep it growing, stay healthy and stay well. Cheers. Hey YouTube, Fino here with Fino's Garden Update, and uh, we are back after about four days after the medical uh application. And the reason being is I'm using my old uh, camera. I tried using a manual app, and you'll see in the clip later on where I show the product that I used, um, where it's kind of washed out looking. So I I do got to do some more work with my new camera. Um, before I get to know it a little bit better and how to use it. So for now we're resorting to the old one and uh, we're going to see some shaking and stuff like that and I apologize. Um, but we will get some better shots and overall the garden is just kicking butt. Um, we dealt with root aphids and that's uh, something that I talk about in the clip coming up. Um, let me just quickly give a quick uh, rundown of what happened. So you can see here in the soil, we'll do like a quick look down here, um, I, or in the cocoa rather, it's 100% pure cocoa that's uh, actually mosquito bits and I was treating for fungus gnats. Um, I talk about this in that clip a little bit where they like to go underneath the meristem. And actually, why don't I just try to keep it all in one video? Because that one was really horrid as far as the color goes. So I'll talk about it now. Uh, I noticed and uh, diagnosed uh, root aphids about a week ago. Uh, and they burrow underneath the meristem here. They look like fungus gnats. And the, how I identified them was when I did a flash flood, they came up and I saw some crawlers on the uh, lip of the pot. And... That was the first time I'd ever seen that, and after doing some research, you can see here, this one too, that's where they burrow, the little ones. They go underneath the meristem, and uh, you get like this little twisting and deformed look down there. Um, had I known what to look for, I probably could have diagnosed this sooner, but now at least I know in the future what to look for. Um, and so what I ended up using was a systemic product called a medical prid and I know it's kind of controversial um, since cannabis isn't federally regulated we don't have um, an EPA half-life determination on that product um, one sec actually you know we will use this whole video instead of the other one let me grab the product and I'll, I'll go ahead and run through that All right, so sorry, we're back. And what it is is it's uh, fruit, citrus, and vegetable insect control. Um, I apologize, it looks a little bit blurry. And what the main ingredient is is this uh, imatoclopril at 0.235 percent. Now that's important because you can buy this stuff at um, Home Depot for regular trees and stuff like that, where it's got a much stronger um, dose. And you don't want to do that because uh, this is for stuff that we're going to consume and it, we want it to uh, work its way out of the plant you know to safe levels by the time we use it now I won't use this on my mother plants and I won't use it on my uh, genetics out in the other area luckily they weren't affected um, I haven't found any to this so far to, to now and that was five days ago there are a couple adults still alive the rest of the uh, youngs or youngins are dead um, and the plants have improved uh, tremendously. You can see they're stacking on some weight. We just finished week five and uh, they just finished their bulking phase. You can see they're kind of right on track to be a 60 day finishing plant. Actually this one here is already uh, all full milky on the trikes and uh, we've got some purplization going on here. Focus. And um, just crystals everywhere and a little bit of amber already starting in the top and we're day what did I say day 40 so that's pretty cool um, 
this one was affected really bad by the root aphid so its structure is very squat and that's why I never up potted it um, in fact I was just sexing it and I didn't mean to keep it but after I did some uh, defoliation and cleaning up of the insides of it I decided to keep it and I'm glad because it, it turned out to be some really awesome uh, looking smoke so of course you know, as DJ Short was saying in a panel I was watching you know the, the end finished product is what we should al always be looking at um, you shouldn't be making your choices during grows and I kind of agree um, when it comes down to you know the the final what we're flowering out um, obviously if you're doing large sifts you're going to be making larger selections um, before the products are done growing <clears throat> but I'm rambling a bit <laughs> the amatoclaprid works its way out of almost any plant in 30 days uh, so if you are kind of paranoid about that you could if you're in 30 days from harvest you can apply the amatoclaprid 5 milliliters per gallon and you apply it once and once only and then you come back and rinse it out and then uh, you won't apply it again because it gets in the plant and it'll stay there for anywhere up to 7 to uh, 30 days depending on the plant um, the cannabis community with a little bit of information I was able to find um, tends to agree on 21 days um, safe to harvest with that so I'm I was at least 21 days safe uh, range so I went ahead and went with a, a medical put over any other method I didn't want it to be a fight uh, for the rest of this and uh, this is all of our medicine that we have uh, coming so um, and we can't afford to be purchasing anything right now so yeah I mean I made the decision I made based on you know my own risks and stuff and the way it works is it works on their nicotinic receptors basically ODs them on a nicotine analog um, it's very safe for uh, semens and pets I mean like you would have to drink it out of the bottle almost to make you sick um, but it is a pesticide and it is made by a pharmaceutical company and just by principle alone it was a kind of hurtful for me to do that um, because I am anti uh, you know that stuff so anyway we'll leave it at that let's take a look at some of these girls here I am just getting so impressed so what I do is I turn each pot a uh, quarter turn each day sometimes a little more or less this here is our number one kickflip and just looking stellar hold on a sec I think my lens might be dirty Okay, it doesn't appear so. Maybe it's just a focus issue. But this one is very frosty. Frosty all the way out onto the fans, just like the sister. Not quite as much as the sister, but when you get in there with the scope, you can see that the frost is just dense and thick. The trichome heads are building. Um, it is a smaller trichome than uh, like the dark plasma. And like the Dark Plasma 10, this one, the 13, is starting to uh, throw on some nice weight late in the game, or later in the game usually, uh, being that we're on day 40 now, uh, the bulking phase is kind of coming to an end, now we're starting to come into the ripening phase, and uh, you notice that's when the, the, the pistols start turning back in, and uh, you start to see some color in the flowers, things like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run these, I think, 60 days. Um, this one may be a little bit longer. This this is Dark Plasma 12. Um, you can see that this one looks pretty immature. Gosh, that focus is horrible, and I apologize. But... Um, this one is more like uh, Girl Scout cookies in that uh, before the uh, bulking phase was over, they looked very golf ball like looking nugs. Let's take a little look at that one in the back there. Um, and this one is a stubbier plant too, but this one was also affected, and I can't really base any of the morphology on this run. Uh, so anyway, let's get some close-ups, and uh, we'll, we'll do a little fly-through. So this is, okay, kick flip number one, okay, this is on deck to be run again. Kick flip number three is also on deck to be run again. They're in the veg area, already up potted in a three-gallon pot. Uh, this is plasma 12, probably not a keeper, 
Plasma 13, two clones, definitely a keeper. And it's got the perfect, so far, smell. When I rub it and smell it, it's kind of like trick cereal a little bit at first, but then you get this really intense, loud pine, and it's just exactly what I want. Um, so, very, very happy with that one. Sucks it took 13 phenos to, or 13 seeds to get there, but out of that pack, but we, we made it, and uh, it was the last one that I liked the best. Um, but that number 10 is something else, though. I think I want to keep it around just because, even though the bud structure on that one isn't the greatest, that lime OG flavor of the uh, number 10 is just something special. Um, but the pine right now kind of trumps it. Maybe it's because we got Christmas coming around the corner. But So let me uh, pop in on the sides. We'll take a look. <clears throat> Um, let's take a look at the kickflip first. Um, you can see here. Let's take a look at the secondary canopy here. Get some focus shots. You can see that these buds are giant um, for a top shelf strain. Okay, so this is the Supernova Purple Punch cut crossed with peanut butter and jealous mail from Square One Genetics, bred by THC Titan. I suggest you look him up on YouTube if you like watching grow videos and you want to learn some stuff. Guy is awesome. Um, very nice guy. Very uh, intelligent. And you know, I've said before, um, I'm very impressed with the uh, the Square One Kickflip stream. Oh, and smells. This one is blueberry, straight up blueberry. You no mistake. <laughs> you smell it. I mean, man, right to the nose is blueberry. This one smells more like complex berry, like a mixed berry, um, kind of like a menthol-y a little bit, uh, sagey, I would say. Berry and sage, I guess. A little bit darker. But the blueberry, that number three, I never thought I would like blueberry. And one of my, my favorite breeders, you know, blue DJ Short bread blueberry and I never even smoked it before can you believe that all right so let's pop in on the side this is plasma 13 uh, this is the smaller of the two this will probably yield uh, three and a half ounces I'm guessing it's a big plant <clears throat> the other one will yield four that's a really big plant over there it drinks its sorry for all the, the moving and shaking guys Boy, I really wish I could get some better light on there. Let's see if I can sneak in here a little bit better. This one is really, really resinous, very frosty. There's probably some fan noise, and I apologize for that, but let's see. Let's get some good. This is Dark Plasma 13. Um, when we get to the other side, you'll see the calyx structures that I really, really like about the Dark Plasma and other strains like Girl Scout Cookie. Um, it just doesn't know where to focus. Hold on. Here we go. That's a little bit better. Um, this is Dark Plasma 13. Um, very, very resinous, um, very sticky, and uh, has good trichome development. These have the very big trichome heads, and... Uh, uh, I think I had turned the plant away from the majority of the uh, the really good examples that I was going to show, but if you look at these, the way that the buds are structured, you can kind of see like calyx structures, like they're in clusters almost, and it makes for a really, really dense smoke. Um, that top especially has a bunch of it, the really tall one and uh, it's going to be a really really dense cola. Now these I did veg under the metal halide I think I'm going to do that from now on um, especially because these were probably going to be some really really tall cuts otherwise. Come on focus in there Uh, the B level bud on this one's pretty good too, but nothing like that kickflip. Look at the kickflip from from over here. You can just see that all those buds, all, even in the mid canopy, are, are you know a couple gram buds. They're big, maybe a gram, maybe a gram and a half, two gram buds. So, um, 
yeah, just phenomenal compared to some of these, like, you know, these little or small ones that will dry out to be a little bit smaller. But um, this one actually has some really good buds on them. Like I said, I'm in love with the smell. It's got these really, really dark leaves. I like uh, the color on it. And uh, very, very nice run. This is probably my favorite run that I've done so far. I'm really excited. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about my nutrition. So I feed Jax 321 as my base. Um, I started out giving... Um, in week five, I started out with the General Hydroponics uh, Liquid Cold Bloom 1010 at uh, one teaspoon per gallon. Um, and I ran out halfway through, treated for root aphids, flushed out the cocoa, and then I went right back into the boost because I, I didn't want them to lose out on any of their bulking and it didn't look like they did. Um, I added to finish off week. Uh, Five, I added monopotassium phosphate in the form of um, beastie blooms from Fox Farms, which has a little bit of food coloring and, uh, and stuff like that, and it also has some micronutrients. Um, so I did uh, hold back on the jacks a bit. Instead of mixing for four gallons, through week five, I was mixing four gallons and a four for four and a half gallons about. Um, and I cut it back to mixing three gallons in a four and a half gallon filled you know bucket and my EC for week 5 came out consistently to about 1.6 1.65 um, so it was heavy obviously and for the next or I'm sorry week 5 I said week 5 didn't I? <laughs> so week 6 I'm going to be um, running just the straight jacks at 3 gallons uh, mixing for 3 gallons it'd probably be like a 1.4 EC um, just to kind of let things uh, finish out then I'll do a two-week flush um, at minimum like before the harvest at minimum two weeks maybe three weeks on some of the strings depending on if they go longer um, the flush is where some of the question is coming in to play for this round I really would like to see some purpling and um, I'm not going to pH this flush um, I think that pH lockout might have something to do with some of the colorful fades that people have. It's kind of just a theory. That and cold water. I know a lot of guys that are on well water and a lot of guys that use RO systems will do their first flush with tap water because it's just too much uh, to have to put through. So I thought maybe using tap water would be very cold and that might shock the plant into uh, giving me some nice coloration too so please leave your thoughts and and any comments in the section below and if you like the video like the video if you dislike it dislike it um i would love to hear your thoughts for sure and um uh, everybody keep well keep in i almost forgot what i wanted to talk about at the end um I really need to get that stabilization turned on. I apologize. Um, so what I've been feeding them is the Jax 321 um, with the monopotassium phosphate. I forgot to add that I've been adding uh, raw solubles, uh, humic acids called Folup, and um, I've been adding that to the uh, reservoir as well as um, honey. And ever since I've been doing that, I noticed a huge improvement in the plant's behavior. The buds are bigger. <clears throat> it just seems like everything overall is better. And I, it seemed like I had to use less nutrients too. So um, my personal opinion so far seems to be good on the Mammoth P. And uh, what I did is I took the last little bit of my sample bottle and I put it in the giant, or not the giant, the bigger uh, General Hydro bottle with some distilled water and some honey just to make it go a little bit further and uh, let that kind of brew. So what I did recently, uh, two days ago, is I, I did a flush after the uh, amatical crit, and then I did another flush a, a couple days later, and then instead of feeding, they were still had a little bit of water in them. I went ahead and let them go and dry out really, really good. And then today, when the lights came on, I came back and I hit them when they were nice and dry. 
I hit him with a, a T with Mammoth P and uh, Heavy Solution with, uh, you know, the PK Booster and um, brewed up Mammoth P in there for 24 hours and it was, uh, it was looking really, really good. Um, I'm sure that they're going to like it. But anyway, so yeah, the base jacks 321 and then uh, Mammoth P and raw solubles full up. So that, and honey, a uh, tablespoon of honey per five gallons. So that's my uh, current system. So cheers and uh, we'll keep it growing.